the beginning argument, the cosmological argument, and this is the argument that many say is the argument that points to the Big Bang. You say, well, Frank, you know, we're Christians. We don't believe in the Big Bang. You guys don't believe in the Big Bang? I believe in the Big Bang. I just know who banged it. <laughs> the evidence for the Big Bang is pretty good. Some of the evidence I'm about to show you. In fact, I'm going to show it to you in an acronym, SURGE, S-U-R-G-E. And I'm just going to list them here. I don't have time to get into it, but the first argument that the universe had a beginning is from the second law of thermodynamics. That's the S. The U is the fact that the universe is expanding. The R is the radiation afterglow discovered by Penzias and Wilson, two scientists who were actually working out of Homedale, New Jersey, Bell Labs in Homedale, New Jersey in 1965 found the radiation afterglow for the initial Big Bang explosion. The G stands for the great galaxy seeds discovered by the Kobe Space Satellite in 1992. And E stands for Einstein's theory of general relativity. Those five lines of scientific evidence are having most scientists admitting, you know what? The universe exploded into being out of nothing. Now, I don't have time to get into why this proves that. It's all in the book, Chapter 3, so get the book. Makes a great Christmas present, by the way. Christmas is coming, you know. Um, but I just want to point out that most scientists are coming to the conclusion, yes, the universe exploded into being out of nothing. What is nothing? Aristotle had a good definition of nothing. He said, nothing is what rocks dream about. That's where the universe came from. Nothing. What rocks dream about. Then this entire space-time continuum leapt into existence. Some say, well, why couldn't natural law have created the universe or been responsible for the universe? Because there was no natural law. Natural law itself came into existence at the Big Bang. There was nothing. And then the universe exploded into being. What do I mean by nothing? No time, no space, no matter. Nothing. And then bang, it all leapt into existence. So if it's not something inside of nature, because nature itself was created at the Big Bang, it must be something outside of nature. So if it's not a natural cause that caused it, it must be a supernatural cause. And that cause must be immaterial. Why? Because it created material. Must be timeless. Why? Because it created time. Must be powerful. Why? Because it created out of nothing. Must be immaterial and uh, spaceless because it created space. You're starting to get the idea that this is the God we're talking about from the Bible, right? In fact, Einstein's theory of general relativity has been proven accurate to five decimal points. That's the E in surge. In fact, Einstein for a long while didn't want to believe the universe had a beginning. He actually put a fudge factor in his equations when he first figured out general relativity because he didn't like where it was heading. It was heading toward a creator. He didn't like that. He wanted the universe to be eternal. So he put a fudge factor into his equations to keep the universe from expanding. But then Edwin Hubble was out at Mount Wilson in California. He said, yo, Al, why don't you come out to my uh, telescope here in, in Mount Wilson and you can look through the telescope and see the red shift in the light to see uh, that all those galaxies out there are moving away from us, which implies that if we could watch the universe in reverse, we would see everything collapse back to a point of nothing. Al went out there, he looked through the telescope, and he went, uh-oh, I made a big mistake. He said, the greatest professional mistake in my life was putting the cosmological constant into my equation. You know what the cosmological constant was, by the way? To do his cosmological constant, the great Einstein had to divide by zero. Ooh, second graders are going, Ow! You don't divide by zero! That's right. But the great Einstein did. He repented of the cosmological constant, and Einstein went on to say, I don't care about the details. What I'm looking for now is the mind of God. He wanted to find out the mind of God. Now, to our knowledge, Einstein never became a Christian. His theory seemed to show that the universe exploded into being out of nothing, which would point to a theistic God. But for some reason, Einstein believed in a pantheistic God, a God that is everything rather than created everything. But his evidence pointed to the fact that the universe 
had a beginning and exploded into being out of nothing. Now, what would Einstein do if he were here today and you were to say to him that the universe did not have a beginning? Well, he'd probably do this.